Now, this video is about pulmonary circulation, diffusion limited, perfusion li limited, those kind of topics. If you want to follow along with me, please do so from page 564, first day 2012. Okay, so on the x-axis, we have the length of the uh, pulmonary capillary. So I wrote here start and end. And on the y-axis, we have partial pressure of the artery. Okay, so one thing we have to understand is that if this is the capillary, we can divide this into three sections. Okay, this, is, this should be start, this should be end, and this is kind of the middle. For any gases, okay, so for most gases like carbon dioxide and oxygen, these kind of gases, they readily diffuse through the, the alveolus and they already equilibrate when the capillary is only one-third. What does that mean? By the end of one-third of the vascular bed, or one-third of the length of the capillary bed, there is already equilibration. So let's say there, if there is 10 millimeter mercury of oxygen here, in the alveolus, by one third there is going to be 10 millimeter mercury of oxygen in the capillary. They equilibrate so easily uh, for only gases like carbon dioxide and oxygen. But what about carbon monoxide? Okay, carbon monoxide had, binds to oxygen very, very tightly, so they also diffuse, but they don't equilibrate. Okay, even by the end of the capillary, let's say the carbon monoxide here is 20. I'm just giving random numbers, they don't mean anything. Here, it's going to be, let's say, 10 millimeter mercury. So even by the end of the capillary, capillary, we're not going to see any equilibration of carbon monoxide. So that's why when carbon monoxide binds to oxygen, that is called diffusion limited because there's a limitation to the diffusion, okay? But when we're talking about uh, uh, gases like carbon dioxide and oxygen, these are called perfusion limited. What does that mean? If there is more blood flow, there will be more binding. This diffusion is uh, not limit, limiting the activity, it's a perfusion. If there is more blood flow, it will bind more because it already equi equilibrates when it only travels one third of the capillary bed. So now that we understand this entire topic, let's see what we see in this particular graph. We see, again, the start and the end, length along the pulmonary capillary, and we see the normal. And the normal is always perfusion limited, okay? And fibrosis is going to be diffusion limited because the problem is diffusion. Sorry, it shouldn't be here. The problem is diffusion. No matter what, the diffusion is a problem. It's not equilibrating. So fibrosis is going to be diffusion limited. A normal is going to be perfusion limited, and exercise is kind of in the middle, right? I mean, it is lower than normal, but it's higher than fibrosis. So exercise kind of falls in the middle. Now let's talk about diffusion and perfusion limited uh, with the help of an equation. So what's the equation for diffusion? Diffusion is going to be equal to area divided by thickness times diffusion constant times P1 minus P2, okay? So in pulmonary fibrosis, we are going to see, so this is equal to diffusion, by the way. Uh, in pulmonary fibrosis, we are going to see increase in thickness. So when the denominator increases, the diffusion capacity drops, right? So that's quite obvious. And in emphysema, or COPD, what happens? The area drops. So when the area drops, the diffusion also drops, okay? So in both pulmonary fibrosis and COPD, we're going to see a decrease in diffusion, and this is the reason why. Okay, so now let's look at diffusion-limited curves and perfusion-limited curves. So let's say this is our first one, and this is the equilibration point. This is going to be, this is going to be PA and length along pulmonary capillary okay so we see that in perfusion limited for uh, uh, gases like carbon dioxide and oxygen the curve is going to look like this 
it has already equilibrated so much sooner before the capillary can end its um, cap capillary bed. This is diffusion, sorry, this is perfusion limited. And for diffusion limited, like carbon monoxide, we're going to see that it is even, even by the end of the capillary bed, we're going to see um, that it has not equilibrated with the alveoli. This is diffusion limited. Okay, so again, I just want to stress that what does diffusion limited mean? Diffusion limited means that the amount of uh, oxygen, sorry, amount of gas that's present in the alveolus and the amount of gas that's present in the capillary does not become equal by the end of the capillary bed. Okay, it should be equal if, if there is very easy um, exchange. But since carbon monoxide binds to hemoglobin so tightly that it cannot equilibrate and we, we have a diffusion limited curve with carbon monoxide. So now let's do some question on this particular topic. So let's say there is a graph here and we have gas tension on the y-axis okay and on the x-axis we have venous blood uh, this is capillary bed and this is arterial blood okay and let's say we have a curve which is like this okay now let's say I say what's happening here why actually this should not drop so radically um, it should it should be a lot more subtle. So let's see, uh, like that. Yeah, I'm 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 not very subtle. I'm just not a subtle person, I guess. Okay, so if I ask you, why is the curve dropping like that? What's happening here? What would be your response? What is happening here is that in venous blood the gas tension is low okay and as it reaches the capillary bed the gas t tension starts to rise okay but as soon as it reaches the the arterial side the artery has both oxygen and carbon dioxide so there is a there's a mixture which kind of brings down the level of oxygen that is present in the present from from the capillary bed which is just full of oxygen so the oxygen level kind of dr not drop but the ratio drops because there is also more carbon dioxide present in the artery so coming from other sources so there's going to be a little drop as it reaches the arterial blood mm, arterial blood arterial bed so that's why there is a little drop so usually it, let's say this was about 40 millimeter mercury of oxygen this became 100 millimeter mercury and usually it drops to 95 millimeter mercury a drop of 5 to 10 is going to be normal a drop more than that will obviously is pathologic so let's do another question here so let's say you have a graph like that on the y-axis you have vascular resistance and on the x-axis you have blood oxygen content now this kind of uh, relationship is seen in which organ in the body well lungs because we're doing lungs in this case but the reason it's lungs is because uh, there is a vasoconstriction uh, or I should say hypoxic vasoconstriction in lungs okay so in lungs we're gonna see uh, so when there is hypoxia there is vasoconstriction because it because it will dilate other parts of the lungs and to get more oxygen from those parts. So hypoxic vasoconstriction is seen in lungs uh, all the time. The reason for hypoxic vasoconstriction is that we want to shuttle our blood to areas of the lungs where there is more oxygen. So it's like I want to get a job done. Uh, here there is no supply. There there's in another side I have supply. So I'm going to move my people or move my working people from this side to the other side so that it can get the job done faster. So that's, that's the whole idea behind uh, hypoxic vasoconstriction. So next question deals with this uh, following, ga uh, following gas analysis where the tracheal PO2 is 150, the alveolar PO2 is going to be 145, 
and the alveolar PCO2 is 5 millimeter mercury. So what best explains this type of gas analysis? So is this going to be uh, diffusion limited or perfusion limited? Let's take each example at a time. So let's talk about uh, diffusion limited first. What kind of problems uh, happens in diffusion limited? Diffusion limited. So let's say emphysema or COPD or pulmonary fibrosis uh, pathologically. Uh, and physiologically, we can see exercise. These can all cause diffusion limited problem, right? So what kind of gas analysis are we going to see in diffusion limited? We're going to see that the diffusion is going to be a problem, right? As a result, we're going to see the alveolar PO2 is going to be relatively higher than, no higher than normal, right? But this is 145. This is not higher than normal. This is, there is almost like no diffusion happening. So is this diffusion limited? Because it has dropped a little bit. But is this diffusion limited? No, this is actually perfusion limited. And this particular gas analysis is actually due to PE. I'll tell you why. It's because tracheal PO2, okay, first when we're inspiring, so inspired air has about 160 millimeter mercury, okay? And then the inspired air reaches trachea and the 160 becomes 150 millimeter mercury because it mixes with the water vapor of the trachea and we see a little drop of oxygen, okay? But then when it reaches the alveolus, this 150 becomes 105 because, the, because of, uh, of diffusion. But this is not even close to 105. This is 145. It's almost like there's a brick wall between, um, between the capillary and the alveolus. And the brick wall is actually caused by PE. Only then that kind of radical, um, radical, you know, radical closing of the capillary bed can, can show this kind of radical uh, diff, uh, small change in difference, right? I mean, if, if it was diffusion limited, okay, maybe some of it, will, it will go down a little, little more than that. But since almost no blood is reaching the capillary bed, there is almost no diffusion happening. So this kind of radical uh, small change uh, is only going to be seen in perfusion limited and not in diffusion limited. Okay, so next question deals with a patient. He's 33 years old. He comes to the emergency department and he has this kind of gas analysis. So what can you say about this patient? Well, we can see that in the alveolus, he should have close to 100. He's only having 71. And in the arterial, he's having 65. A difference of about 5 to 10 is normal. This is less than this is less than 10, right? So there is no problem with uh, diffusion. The only thing is the, the oxygen that is getting to the alveolus is low. So this patient must be suffering from hypoventilation.